Hey, I'm Dr. Greg Kaysom. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to tell you how to identify if the guy you're dating is actually a narcissist. You know, back when I was in graduate school, we learned to give that test with the ink blots. You know, we were told that the people seeing a high number of mirror images in the cards was an indication of narcissism. And the people with the highest number of mirror image responses were actually homosexual men. Now, you know, I was immediately insulted and made my protest known, but now me thinks me protested too much. Fast forward to today where one can't stumble through a gay bar or Instagram profile without hitting a narcissist or 12. I mean, it seems like some gays have cornered the market on narcissism with their extreme self-centeredness, a grandiose view of oneself, a need to be admired, and a heaping scoop of entitlement. I mean, they're likely to tell you about their special skills and unique purposes. They'll talk to you your ear off about their fancy jobs that they don't really occupy, the celebrities they don't genuinely know, and admirers they don't actually have. And for those who were unlucky enough to have dated one, you know they can be like a box of candy hearts, pretty to look at, but ultimately unsatisfying, and they'll give you a stomach ache and a heartache in the end. I mean, you may start out believing they shine as bright as the sun and that you're lucky enough to be orbiting them. But when you get too close, you're likely to get burned. Now, one way to tell if someone's a narcissist is to look in his mirror. And the favorite mirror of the modern narcissist is the human reflecting pool of social media. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, they provide the frame to all those bathroom mirror selfies, and they can also help you to spot one. In a 2015 study published in the journal Personality and Individual Differences, researchers from Ohio State surveyed a thousand men, 18 to 40 years old, all across the nation, straight and gay, about their social media use and their personalities. They found that narcissists spent the most time, more than any other person, on social networking sites, but the real reveal was in their selfies. Posting numerous selfies was related to narcissism and the other bugaboo of the gay world, psychopathic deviance. Now, not quite the Jeffrey Dahmer type of psychopath, that's what we call a sociopath, but more like that rent boy you've been eyeing. Now, you know the psychopath by his famous lack of empathy and fun-loving lack of impulse control, but you may not catch on immediately because he can be a master of adaptation. He can appear to be the perfect man because he can fit in as easily at the circuit party as he can at your grandmother's funeral. And the psychopath is going to be happy when he gets what he wants, but his blood will run cold once you cross him. And as much as the narcissist needs admirers, the psychopath needs pushovers. Did I hear sugar daddy anybody? If you see a lot of solo self-portraits on their Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, chances are you're dealing with one of these two special types of gentlemen. But how can you tell the difference? Well, frankly, it's tough. Even in the real world, there tends to be a lot of overlap and they can coexist. But look closely at the pictures. Not surprisingly, narcissists make an extra effort to make their photos look their very best. Psychopaths just put up a lot of pictures. In fact, they post the most selfies overall, most likely due to their fabulous lack of impulse control, which probably makes them such good one-nighters. But there's also a third group of shirtless selfie takers that's not as dangerous as the narcissist or the psychopath, but a bit more tragic. And these are the men who view their bodies as objects. Though they're frequent Facebook and Instagram users like narcissists, they tend to put, put up fewer selfies. But the, like the narcissist, the ones that they do post make their bodies look amazing. These self-objectification group, as they're called, the self-objectification group is associated with low self-esteem. And these men may not be as harmful to you, but they may be just as self-focused and disconnected. So what if you're the one who's posting a lot of selfies? Which group are you in? Well, chances are, if you're offended by watching this video, and you post a lot of well-crafted and flattering body shots, you're probably in that low self-esteem group. Because if you're in one of the other two groups, you probably really don't care about what I'm saying because you know it's all about you. Now, before you go accusing your frenemies of a diagnosis they may or may not have, this is all based on statistical analysis. Not everyone who displays a lot of selfies is going to be a narcissist or a psychopath or have low self-esteem but they're more likely to be if they do. So your best bet 
is to find a guy who doesn't have a social media presence. He probably isn't so self-involved and may make a real husband material. But let's face it, who's going to believe you're even in a relationship until you post a hot selfie of the two of you at a pool party together on Instagram? Hey, I'm Dr. Greg Kaysan. Stay tuned for more videos and put your comments below. I'll be sure and answer them. And until next time, may your thoughts be with you.